Welcome back. In this video, we start with chapter 3 about compactness, which is the most difficult concept in all this course. So, there will be three sections. First section, in the first section, we will give the basic definitions and some examples and prove some basics, basic facts about compactness. Second section, we will find a relation between compactness and another important notion called sequential compactness. And finally, the third section is devoted to compact subsets of R. Okay, so compactness is really a central concept in all topology and in all modern mathematical analysis. But it's a, it's a hard concept, actually. I will give you the definition now, but uh, it, it took so many years for mathematicians to formulate and to settle down to this modern for formulation or this modern definition. Okay, so here's the definition. A topological space is said to be compact if every open covering of X has a finite subcovering. Okay, I will explain that uh, in details. Don't worry if so this is something the definition has to deal with open covering. So I will explain that. But, so it was discovered by Borel and Lebesgue that any closed interval AB has this property. Okay, and this this is not something trivial. Okay, and they discovered this when they were working in measure theory. So maybe uh, next year uh, could explain to you what how exactly that arrive at this property. Okay, and there's another related property which which is easier to understand, and that you probably uh, saw in first year. Uh, it's equivalent to what we call the bolzano weierstrass uh, theorem, which states that any sequence of closed interval AB has a convergent subsequence, or if you like, any bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. Okay, but here the limit is in the set because it's closed. Okay, now, initially, this property was called compactness. And, but ultimately, it was called sequential compactness. And so here's the definition. A topological space is said to be sequentially compact if every sequence of the space has a conversion subsequence in this space. Okay, so without any assumption on the space X, there's no relation between these two conditions. Okay, so compactness is a condition or a property, and same thing for sequential compactness. Okay. So it's a condition. Not all spaces are compact. Not all spaces are sequentially compact. So what does this mean? It means that, so when I say there's no relation between these two condition, conditions, it means that there are, there is a compact space which is not sequentially compact, and there is a sequential space, sequentially compact space which is not compact. However, there are some very important situations where these two conditions or these two properties are equivalent or coincide. This is the case for metric space, okay, our basic object of study. Okay. So sometimes we will work in the context of a general topological space because the argument really doesn't does not depend directly on the notion of a distance. Okay, so but uh, we are mainly interested in metric spaces. Okay. So, in a metric space, a metric space is compact if and only if it's sequentially compact. And this is actually uh, this is not a trivial result. Okay. So you will see that we will prove that in the next section. Okay. And in fourth year. I will present another important situation when the two conditions are equivalent. Okay. okay, so now let us move very slowly with definitions and examples. Okay. Because this is really a hard uh, topic. Okay, so what does it mean? So let us first uh, start by defining the notion of covering or cover. Same thing. You will find both words in the books. So if you have a topological space, or generally just a set, so a covering of the space or a cover of the space is just a collection of subsets whose union is the whole space. 
Okay, so this is our first definition. Later, I will give a slightly dif different definition, and I will link the two. So, a covering or a cover is just a collection of sets whose union is the space. Okay. Now, if we have, if you are in a topological space, we have the notion of open sets. It's given. So, if the collection, so if the elements of this collection are all open, then we say that we have an open covering or open cover. So here, covering can be used as a name or as a verb. Also, so we say that uh, a collection covers a space. Okay. So. As usual, we give examples. Consider the collection of all intervals, of all closed intervals of the form n, n plus 1, when n belongs to the set of relative integers. Then this is a covering of R, the real line. Why? Because if you take the union of all these sets, you will find exactly R. How do you prove that? Simple set theory, double inclusion. Of course, we are working in R, so each one of these intervals is, in, is, is a subset of R, so the union is contained in R, and conversely, any element in R is between two consecutive integers, and so it's enough just to take N to be the floor function of X. So, it's really, but it's not an open covering, because the elements of this collection are not open. Now, if we take the open intervals N, N plus 1, this is not a covering of R. It's, it's, an, it's open, but it's not a, cover, a covering of R because the union of all these intervals will give me just R without Z because I'm removing the endpoints. So the, so the union of these all these sets is just uh, the complement of Z. So it's not a covering. Okay. So not everything is a covering. However, if I take the collection of intervals of the form n n plus 2 when n is an integer, then I get an open cover, as you may check. Okay, so same thing. Okay, so if you take x in R, then and you take n to be the floor function, actually here you have to distinguish between two cases, but it should be clear that the union of all these sets is gives you the whole line. The collection of all intervals of the form minus n n when n belongs to uh, the non-negative integers is an open covering of R. Actually, when n is zero, just this, the empty set. So uh, we can remove the empty set from this collection, doesn't? So we can take n uh, small n in capital N or in capital N stars. Same thing. So here we have an increasing collection that covers. Uh, R. Okay. Okay. Now, this example can be a little bit confusing. If you consider the semi open interval 0, 1, open at 0, close at 1, as uh, a metric space, okay, so it has a proper distance, okay, then we have the notion of open sets relative to uh, this space. If you consider the interval semi-open semi interval 1 over n1, this set is not open in R, but as we already observed, it's open in this our space 0, 1, okay? And when I take the union of all these sets as n goes from 1 to infinity, I will get precisely 0, 1. This is a simple exercise in set theory. So the union of all these open intervals is 0, 1. Okay, so we have now an open covering of zero. Okay, but it's not a covering of zero one by open sets in R. Okay, it's covering of zero one by open sets of zero one. Okay, so don't be confused. And we can generalize actually example three with the following. In general, if you have a metric space and we fix a point A in the space. And consider the collection of all balls of center A and variable radius positive, of course. Then, as you know from chapter one, this is a covering. And of course, each ball is open, so it's an open covering because the union, the union of all these balls 
over R positive gives me precisely X. Okay. And I can take also, I can restrict the R to be to belong to the non-negative integers, to the positive integers. Okay, so here actually, this is a particular case of this, because you just take here, uh, this is the ball of center zero, the open ball of center zero and reduce n. Okay. So we have two coverings actually. The, the collection of balls with positive radius, same center A, and the collection of balls with same center A and radius a positive integer. Okay. Now, another situation is where we fix the radius and we let the center vary. Then, as you may check, the union of all these balls is the whole space. Just simple set theory. So now we have another open covering of X. Okay. These are really fundamental uh, observations that we may use in the sequel. Okay. So this illustrates uh, the notion of covering and open cover. Okay. Now. Subcovering. What do I mean by a subcovering? If you have a covering of a topological space, O lambda, a subcollection of the initial collection that also covers X is called a subcovering of the original cover. So, okay, so, and of course, I'll give examples. So, for example, if you take this collection of all intervals minus XX, where X is an R, what is the union of all these of the elements of this collection is of course r so this is actually a covering but when we restrict the index x to uh, the non-negative integers we get a subfamily of this original family or the subcollection and the union is still r so we have two things we need a subfamily or subcollection and we need this that this subcollection still covers the original space. This is what we call subcovering, okay, which is a very useful terminology. Okay. And of course, if you take, if you restrict X to the rational number, you also still get a subcovering. And this is actually a particular case of a more, more general situation. If you have a metric space X and you fix a point A in X, then the collection of all balls of positive radius, center A, we fix the center. So this is, a, this is a covering of the space. And the collection of all balls of center A and radius in N star is a subcovering. Why? Because it's a subcollection. Because we're just, instead of taking zero infinity, we, take, we just take the positive integers, and the union is still x, as you may easily check. So we have now a subcovering of the original cover. Okay. Okay. Now we can we are in a position to formulate the concept of compactness. So in words, it's very the, so. The definition is very concise. A topological space X is said to be compact if every open covering of X has a finite subcovering. Okay, this is in word. This is actually very easy to memorize. So, in symbols, what does it mean? It means that whenever I can write X as a union of open sets, then I can. It's enough for me just to take a finite number of them, so I can throw the remaining. Okay, so I can write X as a finite union. So either as a union over lambda and J, where J is finite. Or we can write in this way, X equal O lambda 1 union, O lambda 2 union, O lambda N for some integer N. Or I can also write this as union of O lambda K, K from 1 to N. So you use the notation that you like. All these are equivalent. So you can write in this way, in this way, or in this way. Okay, so this is the notion of compactness. Whenever you have an open covering, you can throw most of them, most of this covering. So only a finite 
uh, only finitely many elements are needed. Okay, the remaining are redundant, so I can throw them. Okay. Okay. Now we can rephrase the same definition in more in other two ways. So you will find in in books you you may find other formulations, but equivalent, of course. So X is compact if every open covering of X from every open covering of X you can extract a finite subcovering. Okay, this is the terminology that French mathematicians like to use. So can extract. It's not. It's rarely used in English, but it's used in French. To extract in in sous recouvrement. Okay, covering is recouvrement. Or uh, more widespread, X is compact if every open covering of X contains a finite subcollection that also covers X. So just same thing. So this is why we introduced the notion of subcovering. Instead of saying finite subcollection that also covers X, you should just say finite subcovering. So it's easier to. Yeah, but all these things are, uh, all these formulations are just saying the same thing. Okay, and now, of course, another remark. We use the index notation O lambda lambda in L, or we can use OI I in capital I, but we can also denote coverings by calligraphic letters like calligraphic A, calligraphic B. And so the union, so union of O lambda of, uh, of O lambda will be union of capital A, capital A and calligraphic A. Okay, so you may also find this notation. So we will be using both, same thing actually. So you, like, you, you can use the notation with which you are uh, more comfortable. Okay, and now, as usual, we'll give some uh, basic examples. So first example, any finite space is compact. And this is really something trivial. So proof is easy. So we suppose that X can, of course, if X is empty, yeah, the empty set is contained in anything. So just take one element of the cover. So if X contains N elements, capital A1, capital AN, and we consider an arbitrary open covering of X, O lambda. Okay, so for K from 1 to N, each element AK belongs to the union, right? And what does it mean that an element belongs to the union? It means that it belongs to one of them. So for each K, I can find lambda K to which AK belongs, okay? And that's it, so therefore, a1, A n belongs to O lambda 1 union, A lambda 2 union, O lambda n. And this, so this just means that the whole space is, is contained in the union. But the union is contained in the space, so we have equality, actually. Okay, so this is really trivial. Next example, less trivial. If we consider the set of, the set 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 over 4, etc., together with, with its limit, which is 0. And we, we consider this as a subspace of R. So it has its own topology and its own distance. Okay. Then X as a topological space on its own is compact. Okay. Why this is so? Let us prove it by going back to the definition. So we consider an open covering O lambda of X. So it means that O lambda is open in, not necessarily in R, but it's open in X. Okay, now zero is in X, so it's in the union. So it, it, so zero belongs to one of these sets that cover X. So zero belongs to some O lambda sub zero. Okay. Now, since the sequence one over N converges to zero, by definition or by a property of convergence, what does it mean that the sequence converges to zero? It means that any neighborhood of zero contains the sequence from a, certain, from a certain rank. So it means that, in particular, O lambda 0 will contain 1 over n for n bigger than n0. So it will contain 1 over n for all n, except, so if only finitely many terms will be outside this neighborhood. This is the definition of convergence. Okay, now, for i between 1 and n0, 1 over i, it belongs to x, so it belongs to the union. So 1 over i belongs to one of these sets that I call O lambda i. And therefore, 
it's easy that to prove that x is o lambda zero union o lambda one union etc union log o lambda n. Okay. Double inclusion. Okay. So first of all, all these sets belong to x. So the union is in x. Okay. Now conversely, if small x is here, then it's either zero, and so it belongs to o lambda zero, or uh, one over n. And here we distinguish between two cases. If n is bigger than n0, then it is an O lambda 0. And if n is less than n0, then it's in this set. And so it belongs to O lambda i. Right? So, and therefore, I didn't need all the elements of the original covering. So only n plus 1 elements are enough to cover the space. Okay, and the same argument shows that more generally, if you have a sequence Xn of a topological space that converges to X, then the set consisting of the elements of the sequence together with the limit is compact. Just exactly the same argument. Okay, so what does it mean that Xn converges to X? It means that every neighborhood of X or every open set containing X contains Xn for N large enough. Okay, so only finitely many indices. So Xn will be outside this for only finitely many indices. Okay. Third example, very important. The real line R is not compact. Okay. This is really something fundamental. And we prove this by going back to the definition. If you consider the open covering minus Nn when N Varies in the positive integers. Or you can take minus xx, x positive, same thing, it doesn't really matter. Suppose that there is a finite subcollection, so minus n, n, n in j, so j is a finite set, subset of n star, that covers r. So r is a, is a finite union of sets of the form minus n, n. So this is actually an increasing sequence. So you can write it as, if you like, minus n1, n1, minus n2, n2, etc., up to minus n, l, n, l. Right? So what is the union of all these finite, this finite union of all this number? It's the biggest one among them. So it's actually minus capital M, capital M, where M is the biggest element in J. And, of course, this is a contradiction because it means that the whole line is just an open interval, a bounded interval. Okay? So this means that no finite subcollection of the original covering can cover the whole space. So, so this means that uh, this covering has no finite subcovering. Okay? So this is the negation of compactness. So to prove that the space is not compact, it's enough to exhibit one open covering with no finite subcovering. Okay? But if you want to prove that the space is compact by going back to the definition, you have to consider an arbitrary open covering and extract from it a finite subcovering. And if you now replace these intervals by balls of center zero, let us say, you will see that Rn in general is not compact. Here I used capital N in order not to uh, confuse this variable index here. So Rn is not compact. Example four, same reasoning actually, the semi-open interval zero one is also not compact. And the same argument, we consider this open covering 1 over n1, as n uh, belongs to the positive integers. If we had a subcovering, then we would, we, would, uh, we would write 0, 1 as a finite union of intervals of the form 1 over n1. Or if you like, 1 over n1, 1, 1 over n2, 1 union, etc., 1 over nl, 1. And what is this finite union? It's just the biggest one because this is actually an, inc an increasing sequence. Okay, so and as n gets bigger, one over n gets closer to zero. So this is increasing. So actually, uh, the this finite union will just be one over m one, where m is the maximum of, of j. So it's a finite set, and this is impossible because it's not true. Okay. So, and the last example of non-compact spaces, if you just so unlike the previous example, if you just take the sequence 1 over n without the limit 0, this is not compact. Why? 
because if you consider the collection of sets of singletons of the of the form one over n as n is an n star okay now one the singleton one over n is not open in r okay i'm not saying that but the singleton one over n is open in y we said that because every element of y is isolated so it means that i can write one over n the singleton one over n as an open interval let us say one over n minus epsilon one over n plus epsilon intersected with y for epsilon less than let us say very small we encountered this so the collection of singletons of y is an open covering of y but has no finite sub collection that covers y because y is infinite okay so this means that removing a so this contrasts the example uh, uh, example is, is yeah so this contrast example two so when i remove a point from a compact set or removing a point from a compact space can destroy the property of compactness okay so this concludes this the first part of this section so on this video I'm, I'm going to stop here because i want you to take time to really understand these concepts because we will build on them later so take your time and restudy well these you can watch the video several times to really understand all these concepts because later we will build on them and things will get, will get more complicated so if you don't understand this basic material we will not be able to understand the sequel so i will stop here and thank you for your attention i will divide this section in three parts so this is the first part in the second part i will talk about closed sets and in the third part i will talk about some basic properties of compact spaces okay see you soon